This is for the fighters for change. Oppression would win if they were to give up. Our collective wellness depends on their tireless determination. And legalization slow burn wouldn't be smoldering without them. They break down stigmas, build up equity, and just say yes. Yes to good troublemaking. Yes to being empowered. Yes to fair access. Now more than ever, Weed Map says yes and stands with the fighters for change. Welcome back to this uh, conversation for our Green Enterprise Information Education Empowerment Summit presented by Weed Maps. Uh, we have a conversation with our very first guest, um, John and Tyler Sally. You guys are very near and dear to my heart because um, we were very appreciative when we came up with this idea and we pitched Black Enterprise, they were like, uh, it might make sense, shoot a pilot interview. And they were like, it needs to be somebody good. <laughs> so we're like, who can we have who's gonna make sense, who the viewer is gonna know um, and who are gonna be really interesting. And we thought about you guys and we reached out to you guys. You didn't know us from anybody from a can of paint, but y'all still took the time out mid pandemic to have a conversation with me, which pretty much kicked off our entire partnership with them. And from there, we've had everyone from Chuck Schumer to Al Harrington, NFL players, politicians, and been able to create a real platform in the mainstream for black people to talk about cannabis business. But none of that would have been possible if y'all would have ignored my DM. So <laughs> appreciate y'all. <laughs> How have y'all been? Oh. We've been great. Thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. We're so proud of you for your success. That's right. And uh, we send the address. You can send us off the Senate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, I want to talk about when we first met, the first conversation we had was um, right when the pandemic hit. Everything was in lockdown. Nobody really knew what was going on. And, you know, people had to figure things out. And I don't think there's a person alive whose life or business didn't change. So from like the outset of the pandemic, when we talked in April to today, kind of what have been some of the changes you guys have undergone as business partners? A lot. Uh, we focused our focus more internally and within California. Um, my dad has expanded the business into more CBD products. Um, Packaging. Packaging. Uh, we realize that it's okay to start off where we are comfortable and then grow. So, yeah. That's a good way. So what what we also uh, ran into a bad business deal in Nevada. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I was just trying to keep the club. <laughs> well, we ran into a bad business deal in Nevada. Of course, you know, people wanted to blame things on the pandemic. But as you know, cannabis soared at least above 40% during it. So we should have been out in certain places. It didn't work. We're still deciding on whether there'd be in a lawsuit or not. So we have our social equity partner here, um, Greenhaven LA, and we put out our first, um, I, I guess our first order. Yeah. Uh, and it was on Leafly. Uh, our name was spelled improperly, but Tyler's going to get it fixed and we sold out. Yeah. So, and that's because I think of the way she curates cannabis. It, she picks it like a fine wine. And when you got somebody that cares that much about the product that they're not even, like she said, if we're going to sell it, I have to be able to ingest it as well. Mm -hmm. um, since then I became, um, business affairs manager of uh, my company called Anthos. And we have a great product that will be in stores and online. It's called Tidal, T-I-D-L Sport. Uh, we, we went into business with uh, Conor McGregor. So one of the things my wonderful daughter is learning from me is if you get one check, you broke. So you better go a couple of places and have checks. And um, and that's what we're doing. We, we're, this is this is really big. And I was always in the hemp um, CBD side anyway, and she was in the cannabis side. But she became a packager. She figured out how not to make the banks nervous. Yeah. Um, but pretty soon the banks are going to come to their senses, and uh, we'll see which one we choose. We might get into banking next. I know that would be amazing because then we really could do the passive income thing. Like, right. That's what. <laughs> Kind of unpacking that what have what have been some of the benefits of because i'm pretty sure your nevada partnership was with a, a pretty large operator right yeah, yeah that did some small time stuff yeah 
Right. And now you're focusing on more of like a, like you said, a social equity company in California. What are some of the benefits of being able to work with a really more smaller craft grow type company? The quality um, can be controlled easier. Um, we know that our clientele, we know exactly who our clientele is, um, as opposed to a large demographic of just blanketing, which would totally work because it's great. But now we know specifically because it's through delivery, we know exactly the parameters are um, how big we can reach. So I think that if anything, it's better because now we get those numbers and the like, we get the data to understand how people are receiving our product. And I think that that's a benefit that we didn't really realize before. Yeah, the, the other part is we get to watch the cannabis grow here in California. Uh, and literally all the people uh, which we used to call the hood, but in South Central that are working inside. It just gave me more pride um, as an owner or a co-owner, um, really just a bodyguard to see this hookup between our business part of, uh, partner, Chauncey and Tyler and these, you know, the future's female, I've said it before. And these two black women in this business, Chauncey's been in for a while, very well versed and Tyler knows what she likes. So it's, it's a great thing. And I think the blessing was that we went into business with another black person that believed that you don't have to be grandfathered in. We don't have to ask. We, uh, we can literally, and you know, we, we learn. Yeah, we learn. If you want something, you have to take it. Right. And kind of moving into what you were talking about with Tyler, how she's gotten so much better at, you know, identifying a target audience, figuring out their relationship with them. Explain how much difficult that is in cannabis, because historically, this is a product that you have to buy from somebody that you trust. So this isn't just something that you can just slap a label on, put it on a shelf. How do you kind of figure out how to uh, communicate that story to, to the demographic in California? I mean, at first, it's hard because most people don't want to have um, any kind of personal relationship with their consumers. So most people think I'm crazy and they're like, well, why does it even matter? Weed is weed. Um, it's not, especially when you live in California. So I think for us, at least for me, it felt like it was really difficult at first for me to decide, okay, what kind of price range do I want to have this in? Because that I think is the biggest indicator of who you're talking to. And once we established that, then we were able to like move. <laughs> Yeah. Another thing is we didn't have to start off with a thousand pounds yeah. of cannabis. Um, you ever, you know, when you go to a restaurant, an old restaurant in, a, in, in Chicago or New York City, they'll tell you about this restaurant in this spot. You can't really see it. You go down, but the food is amazing. Right. That's exactly how she made this. this. And let me tell you, I'm opinionated. To, to put it lightly, I literally say nothing when she makes a decision. I bring her, I'll go get it and say, your majesty, this is for your taste. Okay. <laughs> this is for your taste. And she will literally sit there and you think you are in Hell's Kitchen. She'll be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Throw this away. Like, I wouldn't give that to a dog if it was a dying. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? She was like, yo, this weed is medicine-y. Who gave us this? Like, she will mark down. I hear it. And then I go back and go, oh, no, I didn't work out. But the best thing about Chauncey and, and Tyler is they had the same idea. Anybody can sell cannabis. But not everybody sells good cannabis. Yeah. And your smoke, as she would say, your smoking experience should be enjoyable. Agree. And um, just it's something specific I want to dial in on that, that you said, Tyler, when you said the price point, what area did you guys settle on? Was it like the upper end pricing? Was it mid uh, the, the mid price point, not mid weed, but like the, the more consumer friendly price point? Kind of what did you guys settle on? Yeah, a more mid to low price range, just so that it would it had some respects, but it wasn't like ex like ridiculous pricing. We also really want to get into, I want people to start buying bigger. So I'm trying to convince the world like, hey, buy half ounces and make more money, save money. But 
that's not really, it's not yet, but that's my plan is I really want to get into bulking because I feel like that will be like the future. That's how a real stoner I think smokes is right. in bulk. In Oh, this is no, so funny. She's like Jay Z. She wants to sell weight. She don't want to sell. <laughs> she don't want to sell drugs. She wants to sell weight. Selling three five. No, I agree. I was having this conversation with someone. Um, my company. We're actually about to make an investment in a minority-owned brand because uh, they identified that everyone's pricing themselves out in California. Everybody wants the highest price point flower. And there's a customer who's walking into the dispensary who who wants quality but doesn't necessarily want to spend what all these higher end brands are putting on the shelf. So it's like, you're letting a lot of money walk back out of the doors. And if you look at all of the other brands in like traditional industries, like let's say Toyota, they have Lexus, which is their high end car. They have the Acura and then they have the Toyota. They figure out how to have a relationship with whatever dollar amount each customer is comfortable with. And I don't think cannabis companies have figured that out yet, especially in California, where it's like, everybody wants to just say, I have the most expensive flower but there are people who want great flour, but can't necessarily afford the price point of these other brands. I, um, this was a, a this was an argument. An argument. Right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I've been black longer than both of y'all <laughs> <laughs> put together. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so, I learned this one thing about it. So when we're talking consumers, since we're talking black people, black people will go on layaway. Black people will buy something that they cannot afford and not pay a necessity. So for us to think that black people will not invest in the better quality is a bad thought process and a bad way to continue to think is why Jay-Z has ACEs. If you cannot afford it, you don't drink it. That's my opinion. So that's why the that's why the mid price. I wanted to sell sixty five dollar apes. She thought I was on something, and I said, "I buy wine. I will go buy a hundred and fifty dollar bottle of wine, but I'm guarantee you, you may have another sibling at the end of that night because I'm not letting that hundred and fifty get that. You know what I'm saying? That mentality. But but what I mean by that is, you we have to stop worrying about those who can't have something you you can't live in two places you can only do one you can't drive two cars at one time you can only drive one so you should drive and set this you can always go down in discount it's kind of hard to start off at a 35 dollars eight and go up to 55 they won't buy it because they don't believe that your value has risen 20 dollars but if your eighth is $60 and you go up to 65, they'll do that. So you have to understand the mentality of a human as well. And we have to stop making black people cheap. We're not. The proven fact is hair, clothing, fake jewelry, cars we can't afford, everybody to, cause we'll stunt out in public. That's why we got to stop that thought process. That's me being older than both of y'all a lot. I don't disagree with this, this thought, but what I'm saying is there are more me's than there are you's. And because of that- So there's more there Toyotas than there are Rolls Royces. But guess what? One Rolls Royce is, the, is right. a sale of 40 Toyotas. Again, still. Why choose either or you can get both though? I think that's a- thing like you could have if a, you can get both we wouldn't be having points. this conversation i agree with what he's saying <laughs> but i i'm just trying to I, I it's just hard because i'm thinking about it in the sense of like i want my friends to smoke my weed i want it to be like easily accessible but i don't i don't want to devalue it so this is why i'm like yeah i get it i, I get what you're saying i'm so there but also it's hard. So it's been a conversation for sure. I saw a girl wrong answer. Yeah. Yeah, I, think I saw a girl pay $300 for hair in a bag, then had to pay 150 to get the hair put in, then didn't like it. <laughs> Do not tell me about black people and money. <laughs> Priorities. 
Right. No, I understand. I think there's no wrong answer, but there there's a price demographic there though. Not even necessarily just black people. You know, there there's a price conscious shopper everywhere, you know. So right. and I think in that situation, to your point, you can't maybe do that under one brand. You can't do maybe Deuces 22, have a $70 product and a $35 product. Maybe you put a different name on the cheaper product. But I do think there's a market for it. But to your point, I don't think you can have both of them under the same label though. We should stop making cheap weed. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. But that's also, yeah, because people make really cheap, really bad, and then it makes everyone else go, well, why, why is this one cheap? Well, because it's trash, so they can't really do more. But you're not, you know, when you just want, when you're just so excited about the fact that you can go to dispensary and just get what you want, you're not really thinking about, oh, this one is bad or whatever. Like I have had so many stories told to me of people go, oh yeah, I found 10 grams for 30, for $60. And I'm like, don't even put it in butter. Like, I don't think this is a good idea. Like, I just don't think. And then there are other people that see that and they're like, oh yeah, that's definitely bad. I, you never know. So because I've had places where the cheap eights are amazing. And then you know, you go back in eight months and that's not the case. So it's not consistent. So I've just decided, let me have something that's consistently great all the time. And you can always count on me. It's, I don't want to have to have any like, oh, well, this batch was, no, no, no. Right. it's at this level, high level. And that's why I spent so long trying to find the perfect flower for us because I don't, I don't like excuses. Right, I agree. I think there's a lack of quality control in cannabis right now. To where, like you, to your point, you don't know what you're gonna get, you know, month to month from a given brand or company, right? So, what was your response, John, when she came to that conclusion? Though you just a uh, you came around to that idea? No, it's it's Tyler's company. She's the boss. <clears throat> I am giving you years and years of hustle and things I've been in and didn't go into, things I know I don't know. But the best thing about Tyler is. And, and this is, this is I, I say it all the time. The best, one of the best things about it is, she understands her experiences in this life. If she does it her way, and it doesn't work, she'll then try something else. But you don't know the pain of not doing it your way and doing it somebody else's way first. So she found it in herself, and in finding herself and manifesting exactly what she wanted, she got exactly what she wanted. And so she found a weed. That is, uh, is it 55 or 40? Yeah, I think it's 55. 55 and eight, but somebody was like $55 an eight. Okay. Well, not really, because the taxes were $13. Well, yeah, because it's like a delivery and there's like- Yeah, all that stuff. But the, the experience was great. So when I hear her say something, she goes with it, I'm with her 100%. Um, you know, I'm like, <laughs> what am I gonna say? Yeah. I'm, I'm the vice president. Right. I'm the vice president. And I, and I stay in my position. You can always be happy staying in your lane. No, I agree. Um, and Tyler, I wanna ask you another question. 2020 is bad and bizarre of a year as it was. It was a great year for cannabis, right? And you know, now with the, with the Democratic Senate and the Democratic White House, there's a lot of interest around just how weed could, pop, could possibly expand this year. Like, what are some of the things that you feel like Deuces 22 could grow into as more opportunities, you know, um, come about. Do you guys want to go multi-state, more markets, a, a, a larger product line? Kind of what's in store for you guys? For me, I think I would want to prioritize multi-state over multi-product just based off of the fact that I will dominate. But I, <laughs> I have, I don't know. I think there's different flowers in different states and there's different, like, I want to try it all and I want the brand to be nationally recognized, internationally recognized. So the more that I can grow, I would like to. I also just think it would be cool to have like state specific deuces and you can try all the different ones. So it's different here than it is here and blah, blah, blah. I, I, I love that idea. So that's what I've been really working on. What particular states would you be excited about? Michigan. Michigan. Um, I, I, at Michigan, I mean, there's a, I have a whole long list, but I definitely want to go to Michigan. I just one like, I know it'd be extremely receptive there. I know 
Um, there's great flour there. I have family there. Um, he used to be there. He's not that big of a deal, but he has some people that like him. Apparently. And we, we have <laughs> our, our guy, uh, um, my guy, Adam, who, you know, had us host the uh, hash bash literally has lined up um, who we would use. I, I got my friend Rocky there. I'm getting pictures of great pieces, but until Tyler, we don't fly where it's cold. So when it's not cold, we'll fly there and the taste test will happen. And whichever she likes and people that we trust will do what's necessary, we, we get it done. And we guarantee that what's inside the container, let me say that, we try to guarantee what's in the container is what we picked. So we have to pick somebody with as much integrity as we have. Right. I would love, have you guys thought about maybe like the East Coast, you know, that's emerging. I would love to see y'all tackle the East Coast marketing idea because as y'all know, the West Coast is really like cultural lifestyle type brands. And the East Coast is more, since they were all medical states, more like health and wellness. I would love to see Tyler jumping into that because I don't think there are any brands on the East Coast doing it the right way yet. Yeah. Good. Then we'll be there. Yeah, I definitely have my eye out on a few states just based off of the what I've seen on like Instagram and stuff like that. But yeah, I totally agree. I have a few friends that have started um, hemp collectives in Maryland, and they're like, "Hey, <laughs> come over!" Like, really trying to get me to come over. So I've been, I've been researching, but haven't really fully put in any like final anything. But wait, you, you said something about the fact that the Democrats are in power now. I think cannabis was doing better under the Republican way. Yeah, I mean, so this is the Just issue understand that. I know a lot of people are Democrats, but mm -hmm. Democrats are more churchy. What's right. happening is <laughs> if, they right. can, if they can legalize weed in North Dakota, but or South Dakota, but not in Pennsylvania, um, there's an issue. And that right there is why... I mean, I'm the kind of person that's into politics and I'm really into like senatorial races because that's where stuff will change. Right now, uh, for cannabis to even be legalized, more democratic states need to legalize it. And the president needs to stop, um, you know, being anti-cannabis. That needs to kind of happen first because I think it, it feels like, oh, it's super exciting. We have a democratic majority. Um, things should be moving faster, but like, in reality, not all Democrats think alike. And even on top of that, there's like a lot of other stuff going on that they've decided to prioritize, even though I think this would be an easy win. I not, not saying that it won't happen, but I'm just, I feel like it's that push that we've been doing for the last 10, 15 years, 20 years to get cannabis legalized state by state. That can't just stop just because we've had a new democratic majority. We really have to keep pushing that pressure because states like Colorado are legalizing sh mushrooms now and the country, we're behind. Like we need to like accelerate. So I think that, that the idea that, you know, it's all said and done, this is gonna happen like within the year is a little naive because people have kind of like hung back. They're like, oh, Biden's in, we're done. It's happening. And it's not happening. I'm sorry, but it's not happening. And they still got to push. That's, that's what I've realized and learned. <laughs> I agree. I'm in no rush for federal legalization. Honestly, I think it gives black people more time to position ourselves, the ones of us who are smart enough to try to get in a little bit early. But you were talking about how um, you have friends on the East Coast who are trying to kind of get you to come over there. And I'm sure you guys get uh, pitched a lot of ideas and partnership opportunities. Kind of what do you guys have to see in like an opportunity or a potential partner to make you guys want to do business with them? Well, we can't tell all of our secrets, but right. I mean, <laughs> they have, they have to be good people yeah. and we'll leave it at that. We, yeah. We'll just, yeah, exactly. I got a vibe with you. That's like the most important thing. And I think that that shouldn't be overlooked. Like internal gut feelings are probably like the one thing that's protecting you. So that's like, that's the main thing you have to meet a person see their all of their everything and then decide like do i even like you before i can continue because i don't i don't recommend working with someone that you are not into or that you're creeped out by i've tried it, it doesn't work no i agree 
Move and on. cannabis is more, you know, is you really have to be able to discern if people are who they say they are, because everybody sounds like the next great cannabis entrepreneur. Um, but very few of us actually have the resources and and talent to pull off what we're doing. So I, I tell people in cannabis, you'll get sold a dream a dream faster than you will in most other industries. But um, moving on, I know our first conversation, you guys had talked about maybe like Jamaica and other countries that you were looking at. Do you guys still feel like the international markets are still attractive? Yeah, um, they're growing um, really fast. So I'm I'm constantly keeping an eye on Germany, like right now, now they're letting people grow in this country. I'm looking at Jamaica for sure, just like that is something that is never gonna go away. I'm always going to strive to have a brand there. Um, but yeah, we wanna expand as much as we possibly can. Um, just mainly to provide a steady brand that everyone can go to no matter where they are, no matter, like, I want people to be like, oh, I know that brand. Yes, this one, just, oh, we're safe. And I got you back. And that's what I want to establish all the time. And so, <laughs> you know, I'm sitting around and we went to Jamaica. So you have to understand, I told Tyler, I said, yeah, you, you know, we, you have weed in Jamaica. And she looked at me, what do you mean I have weed in Jamaica? You have weed in Jamaica. Like I didn't I didn't know another way of saying. So we did this interview with her and she's like, I don't have it. So we go to Jamaica and she saw her farm. <laughs> and she just took pictures. She was so happy about it. Um and when we learned the reason we said Germany, and also Germany walked up to her. We do this thing called the ICBC. And in May, we'll be in Austin, Texas. It's the uh, International Cannabis Business Council. Business Council. Um, uh, our boy Alex puts it together. And we get to be on stage and meet more people and, and hear more things because it's about the business. ICBC, Austin, in May. Um, so when she gets to see it, the, one of the, the best thing about what I do is um, she's Beyonce and I'm Beyonce's team. So you understand, be, be fabulous, be Sasha Fierce, everything else is gonna be on time. <laughs> you be understand, high. the dancers are gonna be on time. The outfits are not gonna rip. The wigs are not gonna come off. The mic is not gonna go out. That's what I do around Tyler. So when we got to see, and can we even say no, who grows the we, weed? We're not ready for any kind of announcements. We're just getting ready right, right now. But the, we went to Jamaica. It was so good. It was so good. Yeah, we we talked to y'all after it. it. She couldn't bring it back. So and we had to sit and ingest it. And she kept saying, I now see why you've been coming to Jamaica 22 years without me. No, it wasn't the case. <laughs> <laughs> but. It is going to be when the Jamaica thing kicks off, because we just read the other day that Jamaica is running out of cannabis. Mm -hmm. um, but that's another thing. Understanding why I said we ran into a bad business deal in Nevada, fine. But we learned from that. We learned about scalability. We learned about um, uh, rolling blackouts. We learned about uh, different stages of cannabis may be great here down here it's just like the wine business so if we can get a constant grow and some outdoor some indoor some greenhouse and it's bomb well you know we're always going to have a great product always it's, i wish we can you know do like tabasco and make it in one place but we can't and i know when they open up the rest of the country you're going to be able to get california we wherever you want it um we'll cross that bridge when it comes to as well. Cause we also understand that Michigan has some really good cannabis. I haven't tasted it in Florida. Um, Rhode Island. Rhode Island, Island Vermont, right? Yeah. Uh, Rhode Island has good, has good flower. Really, really pretty flower. Like really pretty. Yeah. So. And it's smarter that we only deal in flower right now. We don't have to worry about anything else. I've always maintained that it's safer to stay with flower because it's like, no one is going to stop smoking weed. That's what I think people need to realize. No matter how much you tell me a vape is going to be the best thing or an edible, people are always going to smoke weed. Always. It's, it's, it's uh, cultural 
at this point. So to not bet, if you can bet on anything in cannabis, the one thing I think you can bet on is that people are always going to want flour. So that's what I like to focus on. No, I agree. Like I think flour is going to, like other uh, segments will increase like edibles, topicals, tinctures, but flour is going to stay the same. Like it's not going to decrease because people use more um, other product lines, but I wanted to just clarify. So are you saying Jamaican weed is better than California weed? No, it's different. It's entirely different. It, it, there's no comparison because it's made in Jamaica. It has grown Jamaican soil. It's Jamaican. We don't even need to have the conversation. There's no comparison at all whatsoever. The thing is, people get weed in Jamaica from the wrong people a lot of the time. So then it's it's literally, you know, wrapped like it's 1970. Yeah, we don't need to do all that. But the weed in Jamaica is not even comparable to American weed. We don't need any kinds of comparison. It's we got bomb. a great growth. It is so bomb. I, though I will say I've had some bomb weed in the US, even like Hawaii, because it's also like an island, they have some great stuff going on over there. But I will say, I don't know what happened, but there's nothing like Jamaican weed. We can just- There's ganja, yeah. right? <laughs> Which doesn't get you hot. <laughs> okay. So that's what the Rastas are smoking ganja. And it's constantly, constantly, you know, it's blessing the sky a little bit or whatever. But we found a weed grower that also likes ganja. Yeah. We don't sell ganja. It's, we sell cannabis. It has to do with the air and the soil and like and the people and ancestors, in the yeah. like auras. They were blessing us. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> I definitely appreciate following back up with you guys. Uh, my last question would be, we kind of touched on it already as far as just like federal legalization and everything like that. And to your point, like with states like Mississippi coming on board and and South Dakota, right, places that I never thought in my lifetime would legalize cannabis. What advice do you give to entrepreneurs in those areas who may look at a John and Tyler and say, oh, I want to do this in my home state? What advice do you give to like the person who may have not jumped into the space yet? Yeah, go learn from the business side first. Um, not everyone is a farmer. Not everyone can grow cannabis, but there are a lot of people who can. So partnerships are something that are important, but learning the business side of cannabis, because it's been a business for years, even if when there were dealers and whatever, and there still are, but is a business and going into it just for the flower is naive. I think learning the fact that there are more older people who smoke cannabis or use cannabis in different ways than you would even imagine. Learning all of that stuff from let's say business conferences or just meeting with different companies. I think that's like invaluable because one, you're saving your money. I We met people that we would go to different conferences around the country, out of the country, and they hadn't even started, but they were like, we're interested. And they're just soaking up as much information as they can because I, I learned about different kinds of um, THC from a conference, talking to a guy in the seat next to me, not from and it's just like random conversation. He's like, yeah, have you heard of THC A and this and THC B and G? And I was like, what? <laughs> like, no, I haven't. And that, and like just those conversations were important, but also just it helped create relationships that I don't think we would have had just going in and doing it ourselves. Yeah, another thing in, so let's just say Mississippi, <clears throat> understand this about Jamaica, which she realized is great for her hair. She has curly natural hair, but that humidity is amazing. So opening your door to your grow one time in that humidity is different than opening it if you're in a cold state. If you're in a cold state, trying to keep that building the right temperature for six, six to seven months a year is an important thing. So you have to understand temperature. You have to understand humidity, um, when things are trying to dry. Uh, you know, it was so sticky in Jamaica, but it was good because, you know, we smoke out of a bomb. Um, that's a whole nother thing too. We, we, we like the taste of the weed. Um, I would just say that. I would say if you're going to be in Mississippi, as opposed to being so deep back where they made moonshine, figure out where you're going to grow, 
where you can have easy access in and out. If it rains and no blowout streets, people who work there can get there. It's hard to rob you. All those things are important. Electricity goes out. You, your thing better kick on within 10 seconds. Yeah. It better be like the government. Yeah, it better kick on and stay on in 10 seconds. You will lose your entire growth. Everything. So you, you cannot have rolling blackouts. So get into solar and wind and, and make sure that you, know, you got somebody who knows what they're doing and wants to help you. They, they have to treat it like they're growing, like they're, like they're growing moonshine, like in Kentucky, that mentality of Jack Daniels. You got to have that. If you don't have that mentality, then you shouldn't get in this business. You know, it's crazy because I'm from Alabama. And what you're saying is reminding me of, of an idea I've been having. I feel like there are so many opportunities as it reaches these, these deep south states like Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Tennessee, because it's so much farmland there. And there's so many black people there who could figure out how to cultivate and use some of this land for like hemp and flour and stuff like that. So that's, I agree a hundred percent. We're actually trying to figure out how we can start to partner with like uh, HBCUs to start informing our kids about this stuff now. Like, you know, there will be opportunities in a year or two or three or however long it takes. But I think black people in the South should start paying attention on how they can cultivate flour with all this land that we have. Yeah, yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't connect any, anybody to you. I wouldn't tell you to, to go to the um, historical black universities. Um, my friend Huey um, tried that and, um, and it, it just wasn't receptive to somebody who has been training people to be in a job. What you're telling people is to be entrepreneurial. So if you're telling people that, stay away from the college, let them go spend their money in the colleges and then come to your college to be educated. So you should just focus on teaching in that state. Do anybody want to be in this business? We will help you in this business. This is what it costs. We will give you the forms, the this, the this, the this, the this. So be the platform. Let, I, I realized this. Um, I said it today and this Damon Wayne said it and it just went over so many people's head when he was doing a lot of standup. He said, black unity is an oxymoron. And only a few chuckled. I laughed because I know what oxymoron is. Uh, <laughs> and and when I when when somebody said that to me, I was like, it. They say it doesn't work. It does. But nowadays, so we don't do it like they did it in the '60s. Everybody should become the strongest link they can possibly be. And if we link and vibe up, all good. That's the way Black people should be now. Because every time it's, we're in one place. Judas and the Messiah, they kill our leaders. So we all need to be leaders. I agree. And you have been black longer than me. So it makes sense. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> and good at it. <laughs> You've been successful at being black longer. Yeah, I'm never going to let us down, <laughs> period. Hey, thank you guys so much. If y'all could just leave us to it, where we can follow Deuces22 on social media. Um, and we look forward to seeing more from you guys. Thank you so much. So you can follow us at deuces22.cannabis on Instagram and D-E-U-C-E-S, -E -E the number 22, um, dot cannabis. And you can buy it Twitter. in California yes. on leafly.com. Yes. So you got to ask for deuces, though. Yeah, you got to ask for deuces. Deuces. Okay.